بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بردة السو الحمد لله ويبريش الأسلة الثاني the second principle so um the last uh, last lesson was the completion of all those things are related to the first principle as we're going through the book uh, of sheikh muhammad ibn abdul wahab explanation of sheikh salih al-fawzan hafizahullah um which is called the three fundamental principles so we uh, so we've completed the first fundamental principle and the sheikh mentions here as you can see um point 27 he says lama farag sheikh min bayani ma'rifat al-asl al-awwal wa huwa ma'rifat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bil adillah intaqala ila bayan al-asl al-thani wa huwa ma'rifat din al-islam bil adillah so then the sheikh basically says so he just he makes a closing statement and he says so when the sheikh um he completed the first uh, explaining the first uh fundamental principle which is having knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the evidences which we have done alhamdulillah he, then the Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan who is explaining the book of Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab he says so then the author he moves on to clarifying the second fundamental principle and he says uh, which is knowing the deen of of islam or having knowledge of the deen of islam with its evidences so then the shaykh continues and he says faqala al-asl al-thani ma'rifat din al-islam bil adillati thumma 'arrafahu wa bayyana ma'nahu thumma dhakara muratabahu thumma dhakara muratibuhu wa qawlu rahimahullah Ma'rifatu deen al-Islam. So then the Shaykh, he says, the author, he says, the second principle, al-Asl thani having knowledge of the deen of al-Islam with evidences. Then the Shaykh says that the author, he goes on to define and clarify the meaning with its levels. So he says, وَقَوْلُهُ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ مَعْرِفَةُ دِينَ الْإِسْلَامِ الدين يراد به الطاعة يقال دان له إذا أطاعه فيما أمر وترك ما نهى So then the Sheikh he says he says and he quotes the speech of uh, uh, the author he says may Allah have mercy upon him uh, having knowledge of the deen of Islam and what is meant by the deen or what is meant by the deen here is um, obedience, being obedient. And then the Shaykh, he says, it is said, so for example, the one who is being obedient, for uh, the one who has deen or follows a deen or uh, mentions the word deen in this, in this context, then it means to be obedient to that which you've been commanded to do and to stay away from that which you've been commanded to stay away from. As we mentioned in previous lessons, the Sheikh mentioned this a few times, if you remember. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, وَيُطْلَقُ الْدِينَ وَيُرَادُ بِهِ الْحِسَابِ كَمَا فِي قَوْلِهِ مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينَ وَيُقَالْ دَانَهُ إِذَا حَاسَبَهُ كَمَا قَالَ تَعَلَى وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ ثُمَّ مَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ أي يوم الحساب <clears throat> يوم لا تملك نفس لنفس شيئا والأمر يوم إذن الله <clears throat> So the Sheikh uh, brings some ayahs to explain and he says it also can mean <clears throat> the deen and it can be meant or what could be meant by it is al-hisab so you know being accounted for for example the yom, yom al-deen 
same as Yom Al-Hisab, like the, you know, Yom Al-Qiyamah, the Day of Judgment. So the Sheikh <clears throat> mentions uh, an ayah that we're all familiar with, Maliki Yom Al-Din, master and owner of the Day of Judgment. Yeah, Yom Al-Din, which is the Day of Judgment and which is related to the word Hisab here as well. The Sheikh also mentions um, <clears throat> a couple of other ayahs um, which we'll go to. Or three ayahs, I believe, here. So let's just go to Surah Al-Infitar. If we go to the translation and the meaning of Surah Al-Infitar, bear with me a second. From verse 17 to 18 and verse 19. So let's read all three verses. And what will make you know what the day of recompense is? Again, what will make you know what the day of recompense is? It will be the day when no person shall have power to do anything for another. And the decision that they will be holy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's clarified what the Shaykh has said. And that's the evidence for what he's mentioned. So then the Shaykh, he continues and he says, قَوْلُهُمْ بِالْأَدِلَّةِ أَيْ أَنْ أَنَّ مَعْرِفَةَ دِينَ الْإِسْلَامِ لَا تَكُونُ بِالتَّقْلِيدِ أَوْ تَكُونُ بِالتَّخَرُّسِ مِنْ إِنْدِ الْإِنسَانِ الدِّينُ لَا بُدَّ لَهُ مِنْ أَدِلَّةِ مِنْ أَدِلَّةٍ مِنْ الْكِتَابِ وسنة. أما الإنسان الذي لا يعرف دينه وإنما يقلد الناس ويكون إمعة مع الناس فهذا لن يعرف دينه وحري به أنه إذا سئل عنه في القرآن أن يقول ها ها لا أدري سمعت الناس يقولون شيئا فقلته فواجب على الإنسان أن يعرف دينه بالأدلة من كتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا يعرف هذا إلا بالتعلم. So then the Sheikh he says he continues and he moves on to the word adilla which was mentioned earlier, meaning evidences. And the Sheikh says, i.e., having knowledge of the Deen of Islam, not blind following, and not just from your own experience or uh, like your own experience that you might have. Uh, or you, you know your own testing and trying things yourself no so it's not by blind following neither is it just by your own whims um, or from what you might have heard from the people rather he says the deen he says it's incumbent that we take our deen and our deen is and its returning point is evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah so the Kitab the Quran the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the Sheikh says he goes as for you know humankind, the people, um, a person for example who doesn't know his deen, and he just follows the people. He sees this person doing that, so he just does that, and he sees another group of people doing such and such a thing, so he just follows them blindly, without asking about the evidence and without being upon clear proofs and evidences. And so he he's like a, he's a he's basically Whichever way the wind blows, he goes with it. He's uh, um, he's not um, firm upon what he actually believes. It could be that one day he believes one thing, another day, another month, another year, is something else. He's not firm. He's moving from here to here to everywhere. He's not firm. So then the Sheikh says, this kind of person um, will never know the deen. And he's just, um, if he is um, in a state of loss, yeah, and and um, uh, where he mentions here, uh, Narkis, so in, a, in in loss, he's, he's, he's not complete in terms of his knowledge or knowing, uh, having enough knowledge or what's necessary and obligatory upon him to know. So this person, if he's asked, um, uh, was when he's going to be asked in his grave, when he goes, this person with this description, when he passes away and he is going to be asked the three questions uh, and when he is asked, those questions he's going to say as you remember uh, from the very start of this book when we were going through it the sheikh mentioned this in a very summarized form we're going into more detail now that the person in this state he will reply to those angels when they ask him he's in reply ha ha he's in say ha ha in 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 uh, amazement or in shock and he's in say i don't know i heard the people saying a thing so i just said it as well blind following so then the Sheikh says it's obligatory upon the person that he learns or knows the deen of Islam, knows the deen with its evidences. From the Kitab of Allah, from the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you won't know this except by learning. So the Sheikh makes a point here, and he says the only way we'll ever know is by actually learning. We need to sit down and we need to learn, and that's the only way we'll attain that knowledge is by learning, which makes sense. Alhamdulillah. So then the Sheikh he moves on to the next point, point twenty-eight, and he says, "Al Islam ma'khudun min aslama li shay idan qada." له أسلم نفسه للقتل أي خدع للقتل فأسلم نفسه للشيء إذا قاد له. so the sheikh is explaining to us um, what the word al Islam means and he later on I'll mention it now but he later on goes to say that um, uh, that a lot of people do make mistakes in their understanding of what al Islam means the common one that we know we must have heard this ourselves and many of us here as well would have heard this and whoever's listening is that you know when somebody said if somebody asked somebody a Muslim what is Islam or what does it mean? They'll say, oh, it means peace, which is incorrect, erroneous understanding. So the Sheikh, he clarifies it here. He says, he starts off with a very basic approach. He says, Al-Islam. Al-Islam, it's taken from the verb Aslama al-Shay. Even qada lahu. So Aslama, the verb Aslama, it's, it's from, it's related to Al-Islam, right? It's from the verb chain of Al-Islam. Yeah. And it means to submit to something. Is to submit your will to something. Is to lower yourself and humble yourself and submit your will to something. For example, submits his will to uh, to fight, you know, or to death or to fight. For example, just one example is given there. Many examples, you know, when you submit your will to do something um, and you humble yourself. So that's what the Sheikh mentions in the beginning. So he continues and he says, "Fal Islam huwa Islamul Wajhi wal Qasdi wal Niya." له عز وجل ومن أحسن دينا ممن أسلم وجهه لله وهو محسن واتبع ملة إبراهيم حنيفا بلى من أسلم وجهه لله أي أخلص عمله لله عز وجل وانقاد لله عن طوائية عن طوائية واختيار ورغبة ومحبة. so then the sheikh he says that al Islam it's you know it's submitting yourself mentions your face meaning uh you know you submit you submit yourself you as a being you submit yourself in terms and also your intention as well so both your body and all terms of your intention you're submitting all of yourself to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what is being meant here mentioned and then the sheikh gives examples from the quran two ayahs um, let's go to Suratul uh, Suratul Nisa first, and he, and this is the whole ayah. And who can be better in religion than one who submits his face himself to Allah, i.e., follows Allah's religion of Islamic monotheism, and he is a muhsin, a good doer, and follows the religion of Ibrahim, Hanifa, Islamic monotheism, to worship none but Allah alone. And Allah did take Ibrahim as a Khalil, an intimate friend. That's the whole ayah. Then we move on to the next example the Shaykh uh, Hafidullah has given, Rahmullah has given here, which is from Surah Al Baqarah, verse 112. So if we go there, uh, we'll read the whole ayah. Yes, but whoever submits his face, i.e., himself to Allah, i.e., follows Allah's religion of Islamic monotheism, he is a muhsin. Good doer, i.e., performs good deeds totally for Allah's sake, only without any show off or to gain praise or fame, etc., and in accordance with the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger, Muhammad. Then his reward is with his Lord Allah. On such shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. And there's obviously further reference. See Tafsir ibn Kathir, volume 1, page 154, for whoever wants to go in more detail. Uh, but this suffices, alhamdulillah, what the Shaykh has given us in terms of uh, what he's trying to convey of the meaning of Al Islam. So then the Shaykh he continues and he says, Al Istislamu lillahi bit tawheed wa huwa ifradullahi jalla wa ala bil ibadah. وهذا هو معنى التوحيد فمن عبد الله وحده لا شريك له فقد استسلم له. So then she says, he says, so that is to submit your will to Allah. That's with tawheed upon tawheed. And what is that? Al istislam lillahi bi tawheed. So submitting yourself to Allah with tawheed upon tawheed in that state of tawheed. He says it is to single out Allah Jalla wa'ala with all worship. 
And the Sheikh says that this is the meaning of Tawheed. And we mentioned this so many times, the Sheikh has mentioned as well, as we've been building up to this chapter, that um, if you remember, that you sincerely worship Allah alone. You do not share partners in worship with Him. Which of course, as we brothers know now, is that uh, the which is the opposite of Tawheed. So if you share yeah, any part of your worship other than Allah, then it's shirk, which is the opposite of Tawheed. So therefore, for us to be on Tawheed, we need to direct all of our worship, all of the time, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. So then the shaykh, he continues and he says, قَوْلُهُ وَالْإِنْقِيَادُ لَهُ سُبْحَانُهُ بِتَعَى فِي مَا أَمَرَكَ بِهِ وَمَا نَهَاكَ عَنْهُ فَمَا أَمَرَكَ بِهِ تَفْعَلُهُ وَمَا نَهَاكَ عَنْهُ تُجَنِّبُهُ طَاعَةً لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى <clears throat> so then he, the Sheikh says, he says, so having, uh, humbling yourself and lowering yourself uh, and submitting yourself and and being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that which he has commanded you with and in that which he has prohibited you from. So if he commanded you with you, uh, if he commanded you, uh, commanded you with something, you do it. You perform it, you act it out. And if he prohibited you from something, you stay away from it in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and that's what that means. So then the Shaykh he continues and, and, and he says, Qawruhu <clears throat> wal bara'atu min ash-shirki wa ahlihi <clears throat> al bara'atu ma'naha al-inqita' wa al-i'tizal wa al-bu'du an ash-shirki wa ahli ash-shirk bi'an ta'taqida butlan ash-shirki fatabta'ida anhu fata'taqidu wa ta'taqida wujub a'dawat al-mushrikin li'annahum a'da' Allah عز وجل فلا تت... فلا تتخذوهم اولياء انما تتخذوهم اعداء لانهم اعداء اعداء لانهم اعداء لله ولرسوله ولدينه فلا تحبهم ولا تواليهم وانما تقاطعهم في الدين وتبتعد عنهم وتاكد بطلان ما هم عليه فلا تحبهم بالقلب ولا تناصرهم بالقول والفعل لأنهم عداء لربك وعداء لدينك فكيف تواليهم وهم عداء الإسلام So this is a very important point to know when explaining what Islam means in the Sheikh he, he, he explains it exceptionally well uh, brilliantly here as clear as day for anybody he says and from Islam or the meaning of Islam is freeing yourself from shirk and its people Freeing yourself from shirk and his people, and it says freeing uh, this freeing yourself. Its meaning is cutting yourself and separating yourself from those people, and being far away from those people, being far away from shirk and its people. By that, that you um, uh, that you believe that you are on firm belief that shirk is falsehood. That the belief that they're upon is false, or that you believe that that shirk, you know, is falsified, and that you stay far away from it, and that you believe the ob obligation that you believe firmly in your heart the obligation of you having that uh, hatred from a religious perspective, hatred of for the mushrikeen, for the idolaters, for the mushrikeen, for the ones who commit shirk. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they are the enemies of Allah azawajal. So don't take them as helpers, protectors, friends. Rather, take them as enemies. Why? Because they are the enemies of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and His religion. So don't love them and don't help protect and, you know, aid them. In rather... You know, you cut them off. You stay away from them, just as the Sheikh has mentioned earlier, at the start of the paragraph, and that you stay far away from them, and that you and and that you're on firm belief that they're upon falsehood. So you don't love them with your heart. You don't help them physically with by whether that's by way of speech or action, rather, uh, uh, because they are the enemies of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the enemies 
they are the enemies of your Lord and they are the enemies of your deen. So how can you help and protect and uh, you know, uh, support them in what they do? And they are the enemies of Islam. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, لا يكفي لا لا يكفي أنك تستسلم لله وتنقاد له بطاعتي وأنت لا تتبرأ من الشرك ولا من المشركين هذا لا يكفي ولا تعد مسلما حتى تتصف بهذه الصفات. So then the Sheikh says then it's not sufficient that you Submit your, submit your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you lower yourself and humble yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of your obedience to him and you don't free yourself from the shirk and know its people. This therefore, this is not sufficient and it's not considered and this person is not considered Muslim up until, up until he's described with these descriptions or uh, characteristics that the Shaykh mentioned earlier and so he mentions in summary again what these characteristics are so uh, it'll be good to make a note of this and memorize it inshallah so he says first so there's four there's four characteristics of a Muslim he must have them then he is a Muslim and he's a, he's a mustaslim lillah that he is he has actually truly um, submitted his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is humble and lowering himself properly in accordance with the Sharia. So then the Shaykh, he says, there's four points, four characteristics of which the first one is, he says, Al-Istislamu lillahi bit tawheed That you submit your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with tawheed, upon tawheed. Secondly, Thanian, Al-Inqiyadu lahu bi ta'a That you, um, that you uh, lower yourself and humble yourself by by being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thalithan, thirdly, al-bara'atu mimma yudadu tawheed wa yudadu ta'a wa huwa shirk. And free yourself from that which uh, opposes a tawheed and opposes obedience and that is a shirk. Right? Associating partners in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabi'an, finally, the fourth point, Al-Bara'atu min ahli shirk and freeing yourself from the people of shirk as well, the people who uh, uh, commit shirk, the idolaters, and other than them, whoever falls in the category of shirk polytheism. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, بِتَحْقِيكِ هَذِي الصِّفَاتِ تَكُونْ مُسْلِمًا أَمَّا إِذَا نقصت صفة نقصت صفة واحدة منها فإنك لا تكون مسلما فبهذه الكلمات الثلاث لألخص الشيخ تعريف الإسلام وكم من إنسان لا يعرف معنى الإسلام لأنه لم يتعلم هذا الشيء ولو قيل له ما هو الإسلام لم يجب جوابا صحيحا. So then the sheikh says so with Act, so by actualizing these four characteristics that we just mentioned, then the person is in a state of Islam, he is a Muslim. As for if he drops one of these characteristics and they are not with him, right? Any one of them could be one or more. It just takes one. Then he's not a Muslim. <clears throat> and... And the Sheikh says, and by these words and what we've gone through, then these three, uh, uh, these uh, three uh, points that the Sheikh's made, he says that this is the definition of Al Islam, the complete and full definition of Al Islam. <clears throat> and the Sheikh says, and so how many of the people, you know, out of amazement, he says, how many of the people how don't know the meaning of Al Islam because they didn't learn a thing? They didn't learn it. And so if it was said, if a person said, if somebody said to him, to this person, what is Al-Islam? He won't, he won't be able to answer him with the correct answer. It'll, it'll be an erroneous one. As the example I gave myself earlier, um, that uh, when, uh, you know, a common one, people asked, what is Al-Islam? 
and they say it's peace, peace, uh, uh, things like this, um, which is obviously incorrect. Because that's Salam, that's not Al Islam. So it sounds similar, word, different meaning. So it's very important to know uh, the words and their meanings and where they come from. Always good to check the dictionary as well, you know, for the meaning. So, um, uh, and then obviously going to the right sources for knowledge. So then the Sheikh, he says, he moves on to point 29. He says, Ma'na al Muratib. So if we just, let me just go up here because uh, the way the book is designed or printed is that. It starts a new chapter here like this at the top. You can see my cursor moving. So we move on to the next chapter. It says, Muratib al-Din, Muratib al-Din. Al-Martabatu al-Ula al-Islam wa huwa thalathu Muratib. So um, this is the levels of the deen. So we're moving on now further into, so moving on from al-Islam. Now that we know what the meaning is, what the characteristics are, what we need to be believing in for us to be Muslim then now we move naturally move on to the next uh, uh, section and that is knowing the levels of the deen or uh, uh, and and uh, and Islam and there are three so the levels of the deen are three and the sheikh he says uh, the first one is al-islam so the first level is al-islam so the sheikh says ma'na al-muratib al-darajat li'annana qulna inna deena thalath inna deena ثَلَاثُ دَرَجَاتٍ بَعْضُهَا أَعْلَى مِنْ بَعْضٍ أَوَّلُ مَرْتَبَةٍ أَوَّلُ مَرْتَبَةٍ مِنْ مُرَاتِبِ الدِّينِ هِيَ الْإِسْلَامُ ثُمَّ بَعْدَهَا الْإِيمَانُ ثُمَّ بَعْدَهَا الْإِحْسَانُ فَالْإِسْلَامُ أَوْسَعُ وَالْإِيمَانُ أَضْيَقُ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْإِحْسَانُ أَضْيَقُ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ So then the Sheikh says the meaning of al-muratib is levels or uh, uh, let's say Degree. So you have the first level, then you have a second level which is higher than the first one, then you have the third level which is higher than the second level, uh, the second one, like that in degrees of in increasing in, uh, in levels. So then the Sheikh says, because we said that the Deen has three uh, levels or degrees, he says some of it higher than the other. Right, and he explains, he says, so the first level, Martaba, the first level is from the uh, from the uh, levels of the deen, it is Islam, that's the first level. Then after that, it is Al-Iman, that's the second level. Then finally, the third level, it is Al-Ihsan. And he says, so Al-Islam is more, sort of more encompassing than Al-Iman. And uh, and Al-Iman uh, and Al-Ihsan is more encompassing than Al-Iman. So I think that the best way to explain this is, which is another Sheikh mentioned and explained in a very, very nice way for anybody to understand. And even if you have a basic understanding, we can understand it. Uh, Sheikh Abdul uh, Razak Al-Badr, Hafizullah, mentioned, he said, when we talk about Al-Iman, so Al-Iman, uh, uh, Al-Islam or Muslim, Al-Iman or Mu'min, Al Ihsan or Muhsin, right? He says that think of it as three circles. Think of it as three circles. Al Islam is the biggest circle, it encompasses every you know, everybody who's a Muslim it encompasses them. Then you have uh, Al Iman, which is within Al Islam, and but not every so is not every Muslim is a mu'min, yeah. And then you have Ihsan inside the circle of. Al Iman, and so not every muhsin. Uh, sorry, so every so th this is how you would uh, see it. Every Muslim, right? So everybody who's a Muslim, right? That's the most general thing. So let's go from back to front. I think the best way to do it is from back to front, so I don't confuse any of you, inshallah. So every muhsin is a mu'min and a mus uh, and a Muslim. Every mu'min is a Muslim, but not every Muslim is a Mu'min and a Muhsin. So uh, that's the best way uh, I think I can put it for you, just as a, uh, the Sheikh, as you mentioned in Arabic, I think I've done a decent job, hopefully, inshallah, of explaining that. But you can imagine it, that obviously a Muhsin is at the highest level. A person who uh, has this characteristic, he has the highest level. He is a Muslim, he is a Mu'min, and he's reached the level of Ihsan. He's a Muhsin. A Mu'min, is a Muslim and he's reached the level of uh, being a mu'min. And then you have a Muslim who 
uh, uh, who's a Muslim but hasn't reached the level of uh, uh, of, uh, of a mu'min or a muhsin. So you can see that Islam is the most general. Then after that is the mu'min. Then after that is the muhsin. And obviously, uh, that's as you can see, as a person increases in their worship and you know, as he get, becomes more and more obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increases his worship, then he can reach these levels in the deen. Um, and the highest level being al ihsan So then the shaykh continues and he says, he says, فَدَائِرَةُ الْإِسْلَامُ وَاسِعَةَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِيهَا إِذَا قَادُوا إِلَى الْإِسْلَامُ وَأَذْهَرُوهُ وَالْتَزِمُوا بِهِ ظَاهِرًا إِذَا صَلُّوا مَا الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَزَكُّوا وَعَمَلُوا وَعَمِلُوا الْعَمَالَ ظَاهِرًا يُسَمُّونَ مُسْلِمِينَ وَتُطَبَّقُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَحْكَامُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَلَهُمْ مَا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ وَعَلَيْهِمْ مَا عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ لَكِنَّهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ فِي فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ لِأَنَّهُمْ لَيْسَ عِنْدَهُمْ إِيمَانٌ وَإِنَّمَا عِنْدَهُمْ إِسْلَامٌ ظَاهِرٌ فَقَطْ So then this is a very good example actually. The Sheikh mentions, he says, so he says the circle of Islam is far and wide encompassing. Uh, as we mentioned uh, in the previous paragraph. And he says, for example, he gives the example of the hypocrites, the munafiqun. He says the munafiqun, they enter in the circle of Islam if they uh, lower themselves and submit themselves to Al-Islam and they portray it outwardly. Physically, you can see by your eye that the person is portraying it and they stick to uh, uh, is the, uh, what is required from them of Islam uh, uh, openly and apparently. So, for example, they they pray. So, if they prayed with the Muslims, they gave charity. They, um, you know, uh, uh, carried out all sorts of good deeds outwardly. You can see it outwardly happening. You call them Muslimin, even though they're from the Munafiqin, from the outward action. So, the the Islamic rulings are applied to them uh, as as it is to the Muslims in the dunya. So for them, you know, and for the Muslimin, uh, 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 you know, they are seen as Muslimin in the outward apparent actions, right? However, that's in the dunya. But in the akhirah, in the life after death, uh, they will be in the lowest levels of the fire of the of Jahannam, of the hellfire. They'll be in the lowest levels of it because of the nifaq, because of the hypocrisy, because they are not from the people of Iman. But in um, the Sheikh says rather they are fr- they are from uh, they are, they have with them Islam uh, the apparent Islam only they only have the apparent Islam they don't have anything in them inner they don't believe in it obviously Munafiqun don't believe but they show that they do on the outward action yeah so then the Sheikh continues and he says قوله الإيمان he says هذه هي المرتبة الثانية والمؤمنون يتفا وَتُونَ مِنْهُمَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ وَمِنْهُمَ الْأَبْرَارِ وَالْمُقَرَّبُونَ هُمْ أَصْحَابَ أَلَّا الدَّرَجَاتِ وَالْأَبْرَارِ دُونَهُمْ وَمِنْهُمَ الظَّالِمِ لِنَفْسِهِ وَهُوَ الْمُرْتَكِبُ لِلْكَبَائِرِ أَلَّا تِهِيَ دُونَ الشِّرْكِ فَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَاسِقٌ أَوْ مُؤْمِنٌ نَاقِصٌ نَاقِصُ الْإِيمَانِ قَالَ تَعَالَى ثُمَّ أَوْرَثْنَا الْكِتَابَ الَّذِينَ أَصْطَفَيْنَا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَسِدٌ وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَضْلُ الْكَبِيرِ So let's just stop there for a second. So then we move, so that's Islam that the Sheikhs explained. Then he moves on and he mentions Al-Iman. So the, the circle that's uh, within uh, uh, the circle of Al-Islam. Uh, and, and that is, that uh, that's the second level of the deen. And it is, Regarding the believers, the mu'minun. And they di- and there is a difference between the levels of the mu'minin. So the shaykh says, so from them are those ones who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the muqarrabun, muqarrabun, and from them are the ones who are called al-abrar. So the shaykh says, the al-muqarrabun, they are the people who are going to be, uh, that are the top level. They are the top level. Yeah? The muqarrabun, they are the top level. And the abrar are other than them. And even and also from them are those who oppress themselves, meaning those believers who oppress themselves. For example, they perpetrate and fall into major sins. Uh, uh, other than shirk, they fall into all kinds of sins, major, minor, other than shirk. Uh, uh, sorry, they uh, fall into major sins, uh, which doesn't constitute shirk. 
So this is, for example, this person's a, a mu'min fasik. So a mu'min uh, who is uh, falling into sin, a repeated sinner, for example. Or he is a mu'min that is a naqis al-iman, that is, iman is, um, uh, is not complete, it's deficient. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this ayah that we read, let's go to the meaning of that. Surah uh, Fatir, if you go to Surah Fatir, verse um, 32, let's read the meaning of that. Then we gave the book, the Quran, for inheritance to such of our slaves whom we chose, the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then of them are some who wrong their own selves, and of them are some who follow a middle course, and of them are some who are, by Allah's leave, foremost in good deeds. The inheritance of the Quran, that is indeed a great grace. And just to uh, add an extra benefit, inshallah, if I can, uh, and that is that in the ayah here where Allah mentions فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ So there's three people. If we read the next ayah, if we read the next ayah, let's read the next ayah. جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ يَدْخُلُونَهَا يُحَلَّوْنَ فِيهَا مِنْ أَسْرَاوِرَ مِنْ ذَهْرٍ وَلُؤْلُهَا وَلِبَاسُهُمْ فِيهَا حَرِيدٍ so if we read the first line or uh, the first line of the next ayah, it says the uh, Eden, Eden, paradise, everlasting gardens, they will enter therein. So if we go back now to the previous ayah, which we read here, Surah to Fatir verse uh, 32, then ظالمون لِنَفْسِهِ is the person who um, commits sins, who, who obviously oppresses himself by way of committing sins, major sins, etc., uh, that that require him, uh, if Allah doesn't forgive him, that require him to be purified in the hellfire before entering Jannah. As we mentioned, this, the ayah that followed it, that all these three types of people, they will go into Jannah. So uh, that's the first type. Then the other person is the muqtasid, the person who's economical, meaning that the person who's economical in how he goes about following his deen. So whatever Allah said you do, he does it. And whatever Allah I said stay away from me, he stays away from me, and he's like that. He's on that stay all the time. He is the muqtasid. And this person, he will enter Jannah without any hisab. He will go straight to Jannah, straight away. And then you have the final person who is the best of them all. The best of them all in 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 uh, in the Islam, in the in the in the Iman and in the Ihsan. Of course, this is the top level, the Muhsin, and this is a person who uh, who is, uh, where he mentions here, وَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَسِدٌ We mentioned that, وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِكُمْ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ بِذْنِ اللَّهِ And that one is the person who does all that which the muqtasid does, as in does all that which Allah has commanded with him, in terms of uh, 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 um, commands and prohibitions, staying away from them. But he also puts forth lots of uh, superrogatory and optional deeds forward. So how would you compare the, those two? One person, for example, the Muqtasid, uh, Muqtasid, he will just fall, complete his fard. Whatever is obligated upon him, he'll do that. Whereas the Sabiqum Bil Khairat is the one who will do that as well, but also put forth superog superrogatory uh, uh, um, worship. So he'll give a lot of sadaqah, you know, he'll do a lot of nawafil, tahajjud, and many, many of those uh, ibadat that we can do. So this is that person. And obviously these two will go uh, straight to... Um, Jannah with any hisab. And then the Shaykh continues and he says, Qawluhu al -ihsan. And I think we'll finish here, inshallah, uh, after this paragraph, Bismillah uh, ta'ala, on Al-Ihsan. So then the Shaykh, he says, Qawluhu uh, al-Ihsan. Hadi hiya al-martabatu thalithatu wa hiya al-Ihsan. Wa hiya an yuhsina al-abda, an yuhsina al-abdu fi ma baynahu wa bayna Allah. Fi ibadati Allah azza wa jal. وذكر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الإحسان فقال الإحسان أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك أي يكون عندك علما يقينيا أن الله يراك أينما كنت So then we move on to the highest level of, of our deen and that is in being in the state of Al-Ihsan <coughs> and the Shaykh he says, he says that this is the third level and it's Al-Ihsan and it is that you, uh, that, uh, that you, uh, it says here, that you are all, you, that you do your best. You're doing your best, you're improving, and you're at the top level of your worship, and what's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you're always seeking 
to do the best all the time and avoid any kind of wrong. In one example, so the Shaykh says, for example, in, in the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, and then the Shaykh says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned Al-Ihsan and he said that Al-Ihsan is that you worship Allah like you see him. But you won't, you don't see him, you won't, you, you didn't see him, you won't see him in the dunya. But he sees you. Yeah. So Al-Ihsan is that you worship Allah like you can see him. And if, of course, you're not going to be able to see him. But he indeed, he sees you. So that's how you should be. Like whenever you're doing something, okay, I'm going to pray. You just imagine that, you know, you put your, in that state that Allah it sees you, it sees you, you know, with yaqeen, with the full certainty that Allah, it sees you, he knows what you're doing, wherever you are. Doesn't matter where you are, Allah sees exactly what you're doing. He has full knowledge of you. He hears what you say, and he sees what you do. And that's what, what is meant here. And then the Shaykh continues and he says, قوله وكل مرتبة لها أركان والأركان جمع, جمع رك, ركن وهو ما يقول, يقوم عليه الشيء. So then the Sheikh says, and so for, so every level has its pillars. So all these three levels, every level has its pillars. And the Sheikh defines this for us as well. Um, he says that the pillars, that, that um, uh, a pillar, uh, the plural of it is pillars. And so every level has its pillars. And those, uh, and, and those are what, that those levels stand upon those pillars they keep that building let's use a metaphor as a building they keep that upright and stop it from collapsing so then the sheikh says for arkanush for arkanush for arkanush shay juwanibuhu allati yakumu alayha wa la yakumu bidunha wa takunu bidakhil shay khilaf shurut fa hiya takun kharij shay mithlu shurut as-salah fa hiya kharij as-salah qablaha and then the Sheikh goes on to explain a little bit more, and this is our closing uh, paragraph now, inshallah, and then we'll finish. He says, so pillars of a thing, so if, if there's a pillars of a thing, they are what support its sides, you know, from the bottom, from the sides. They support it, and 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 that's the, uh, something where the foundation, for example, it you know it has the um, sorry the pillars. It keeps something upright. Let's just use a quick example, easy one for us. And the sheikh mentions uh, an example as well. For example, the you know the the you know the tent. So the poles of the tent, they keep the tent up. Without them, they'll collapse. There won't be a tent. Uh, and so he explains as well in terms from the deen as well. Um, he says that so we, we know what the pillars mean and we can you know relate to that. Then he says, but it's not like the conditions. For example, you have pillars and they are uh, uh, within something. For example, like the pillars of the prayer. For example, from the pillars of our prayer, when we read our salat, uh, the masjid, for example, or we're at home or whatever, when we are praying the salat, the uh, from the pillars of the prayer are. To say the opening takbir is to recite Surat Al Fatiha in every rak'ah. Yeah? For example. Um, uh, and such. So the Sheikh says that if a pillar uh, uh, is negated or left out, then your salah, your prayer, in this situation, your prayer, if, a, if you drop a pillar, your prayer is falsified, is nullified. Just as in the example, if the pillar was missing from uh, from uh, the tent, it's not going to be upright. And uh, and then he makes a distinction between the shurut conditions. For example, conditions of um, he mentions here, uh, uh, like for example, tahara. So you have the shurut. He mentions here, says faya takun kharij shay miflu shurut as salah. So if you've got like the conditions of the prayer, for example, so you have conditions of the prayer. So when we're talking about pillars, they are to do with the thing within it. Like we mentioned, uh, when you're praying, you have to say the takbir, the takbir, you have to read the Surah Al-Fatiha in every rakah and from the other pillars of the prayer, just as some examples we've given there. But the shurut, the conditions are before you even have entered the prayer. So for example, making sure that you're upon wudu, that you're upon uh, uh, cleansing, 
cleanliness and purity, uh, you know, and amongst the other um, conditions, uh, for example, that are related to the prayer, just as in this example the Sheikh has given us. So then he says, so just like a building, if it doesn't have the pillars and are supported, then it's going to collapse and it can't stand. That's the same thing with the deen, that it has its pillars and they, they support the deen, yeah, and being upright. So um, we'll finish there, inshallah, and then next week we will start uh, discuss the Sheikh will explain the first uh, pillar of Al Islam, that's the Shahada. Uh, that's the two testifications, inshallah. We'll go through it next week. Barakallah fikum, inshallah khair. Subhanakullah wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha ilant wa astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.